All rise for the Honorable Judge T.J. Order in the court. Order in the court. We're here today to judge the fate of our beloved memer, our wonderful friend, a guy that I actually like, contrary to what you see on Twitter, an all-around developer, Trash Def. Here today, we'll decide whether we need to cancel our boy Trash or allow his memeing to continue on Twitter. And now let us hear his case. Let us present the evidence. And here we have our evidence. What we see here is a trash dev meme, probably an original because it's pretty mid, where trash is trying to present what I think is actually some decent advice to junior engineers. But before we go over why I think it's decent advice, let's first just discuss possible ways that you could interpret this that would make it, instead of just a trash take, it would make it a toxic take. Toxic take option number one would be that it's never okay to ask for help. This is just a really bad opinion. It's good to ask for help. There are different times and different scenarios where it can save you days, weeks, months, years even, if you ask the right person the right question and get the right answer. I don't think this is what Trash is saying, but some of the people, perhaps they read a little too quickly or just because they uh, didn't understand the point Trash was trying to make, I think thought that this is what Trash was saying. Hey, you're a junior. You should just have to suffer and never ask your seniors for any help. And if you do ask your senior for help, your senior should be mean to them. That's a bad take, creates a bad work environment, and you're really not going to get as much done as you should be able to if you have a cooperative and nice work environment. Plus, it's just mean and mean isn't good. Toxic take option number two is, sure, sometimes you have to ask for help, but that's always bad. Because basically you're saying you should have to learn everything on your own or learn everything through experience. I don't think that's the case. I think wise and smart people will take the experiences of others, look at those experiences, the knowledge that they gained, the wisdom that they've gained, and use that for themselves to avoid having to do those. I often tell my son, don't touch the oven because it's hot. And up till now, he hasn't touched the oven, which is the wise course of action to do. If instead I just made my son put his hand on the oven to hurt himself, that would be a bad thing to do, right? He can learn not just through experience and also learn through communication in a safe and trusting environment where we want to learn from each other. So I don't think that it's inherently bad to ask questions. So the third possible interpretation which I think is wrong and not what Trash is saying, that would have been a toxic take, would be that when people ask for help, it's okay to belittle them. So you're sort of seeding the point like, yeah, it's okay that sometimes people need to ask for help and that it's not always bad. But since they're asking you for help, you're allowed to belittle them. I agree that that's a toxic take. It's not good to do that. And it doesn't create safe and effective work environments. Now, keep in mind, this is different than when someone asks for help, that they always feel good or happy when the conversation is done. There are things when you're confronted with difficult feedback, which we're going to get to in the second half of the video, that won't make you feel good and bubbly and happy inside. You're going to feel maybe a little bit sad or like maybe you did something foolish and that just might be true and you might have to own up to that. But that's separate from belittling them. Belittling them is to go beyond just saying that maybe what they did you don't agree with or you didn't like or it's not your preferred way or whatever it is, but instead saying that like they're the bad person because of asking for help or something like that, right? It's taking that next step of attacking them sort of as a person or making them feel lesser than you or not as good as you or whatever instead of just treating them with respect and kindness but presenting some idea that's different. So what I think Trash's actual take is, and keep in mind this is trash devs take, uh, the take I think actually is good and I agree with, is that before asking someone else for help, you should try something yourself. Now, depending on your skill level, depending on your experience, depending on your knowledge, depending on whether it's your first week at a job or your sixth year at a job or whatever it is, there's going to be a variety of how long you should try. If you're a junior and you're just starting out a brand new job, Maybe don't spend more than five minutes trying out how to log into this particular server to do something or to download your environment or what does Git clone mean, you know, depending on what your level is. That's okay. Maybe don't spend more than five minutes on that. But I would really encourage you, and I think this is what Trash is trying to present in sort of a funny format that people might be able to find relatable, is you should try that thing for yourself. And when you go ask for help, present the things that you've already tried. This shows several really important things to the person that you're asking for. It shows that you value their time, 
that you consider them not just there for your own personal convenience or as your own search engine, but instead as a person that you're working with that you don't want to interrupt needlessly, right? So if, if you ask something like, uh, what is Git clone? And you don't even say, I've Googled it right? Or binged it. You know, I mean, I don't know if people are duck, duck, go. It's 2023. Who knows? Right. If you haven't done that and read the first few paragraphs, that does seem like something where you're basically just saying, I expect you to do work for me and I don't want to have to do anything. I'm entitled to your time. And I don't think that that's a really great work environment, right? I want to feel respected by my coworkers, just like what the people who are saying for these possible interpretations of it that would have been toxic are saying you're not respecting the juniors, right? You also want the juniors to be able to respect the seniors. It should be a two-way street of respect in the workplace. But beyond that, besides just the interpersonal reasons why I think it's important to try something for yourself and to present those things, there's also the effectiveness aspect of this. If you say to the person, I've already tried this, this, and this, then they don't have to ask you or to work through those things or to ask probing questions to find out what you've already tried. They can skip right over those and go to the next thing in the sequence of what might need to be done to solve that problem. That's helpful. That once again, not just shows respect for them, but then actually ends up with a more effective and efficient conversation which once again breeds a culture of respect and efficacy at your work, which is great. But the last aspect of this that I think is really important and that sometimes people really want to look over because we often, as humans, I think, prefer to take the easier path or the quicker path for us or whatever that is, but that sometimes having a difficult experience, struggling through that, working hard will end up giving you that knowledge or the skills or the muscles necessary to confront future problems. What do I mean by it gives you the muscles to confront those future problems? Basically what I'm saying is, let's just take me parenting my son. If what I always do for my son is prevent him from ever having any opportunity to fail, any opportunity for him to try something new, and instead I always do everything for him. I always cut his food and I always feed him every bite and I never let him touch the fork because he might spill. He's never gonna learn how to feed himself. Right. And the same thing I think goes for some aspects and to some level for our own work and for our own software skills. And actually, I think it extends beyond just software. Right. But in particular for software, I think getting this muscle of encountering a problem, being able to break that problem down into smaller pieces, solving those pieces on your own where possible, and then finding which pieces make sense to ask questions about after doing a little bit of work, and then being able to combine those pieces to solve the solution, that process is a skill that you can hone and get better at, and you can get better and better at it over time. But you'll be surprised at how good and how much better you can be at that process if you do that for yourself for five years. If you don't let yourself always take the first opportunity to go ask someone else, but instead you work to be able to become an expert, to conquer that field, to really know and understand it. Now, there's certain things where it just makes sense as soon as you've tried it basically to go ask, right? I don't understand how to log into this new service that we have. Okay, go ask someone. Don't spend forever figuring out how to use this custom thing, right? Or, oh, you've got a library at work and, and one of your coworkers is the one that wrote it and you have some weird edge case that is breaking the expectations of what you thought it should be based on the function name. Ask a question. That's great, right? But don't let that always be your first default thing. And I think that's what Trash is trying to say. We go back to the meme and we look at what Trash is saying. The asking for help is not the problem in the meme. The problem in the meme that Trash is trying to bring up is just the immediate going from I've encountered a problem to I'm asking help instead of at least trying. If I get a question from someone, even someone random on the internet, and I get a lot about NeoVim, and what they start off the problem with is, hey, TJ, Thanks for taking the time to talk to me. I tried this, 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 and this, and I couldn't get this thing to work. Do you have any ideas of what I could try? I'm a thousand times more likely to respond to them and have a much more productive conversation than someone who just messages me and says, hey, this didn't work. That doesn't help me, right? The first one is a way that shows that you respect my time and that you respect me and value the time that I have, right? And this goes the same for at work, right? If someone messages me and they just say, hey, what is get clone? I'm going to be like very confused why they didn't just look that up 
at all for themselves. But if what they present is, hey, I don't really understand Git clone. I've tried watching this video and reading these help docs, but I don't understand what it does when you have this flag or when it does this thing, or I just don't fundamentally understand Git. Do you have any time today to answer some questions about it? I'll be like, yes, I will make time, right? And you see how those two things are very different. The first one just presents this idea that, oh, I'm just here to solve your problems. While the other one says, I worked hard on this already and I was unable to solve it. I'll never ever make fun of that person for not being able to solve it. And in fact, I don't think it's okay to make fun of that person or to belittle them or to be mean to them. I think in that situation, you should still be kind to them. But kindness doesn't just mean answering their question without ever trying to help them correct that behavior. I think it's perfectly reasonable as that senior dev to say, hey, this is where I would look it up. Have you tried looking that up yet? Or maybe bringing up different ways after helping them how they could do that better in the future, or even just methods of communicating with that senior dev that makes them feel more respected and more valued, right? Maybe they did look those things up, but they didn't ever communicate that to you. Okay, well then just tell them that it makes you feel less valued, that you don't do that. Those open lines of communication, those honest feedback, that's not the same thing as being mean, right? I, I, that's the distinction that I think some people sometimes struggle with understanding. Me just telling you, I don't think that was the most effective way that you could have brought this up. Perhaps you can bring it up more like this or try these things first or do X, whatever it is for the particular case. Those kinds of things help make it very clear and obvious that you want the other person to succeed. It means that you don't want them to fail. It means that you do care about them. It means that you want to build a trusting and safe environment for them. But trusting and safe doesn't just mean that we don't ever try and help each other. In fact, I think generally speaking, it means the opposite. What you want is some place where you can trust that people are being honest with you and telling you what they really feel. And you guys can work together to all get better and to ship a product or a company or what library or open source thing together, whatever it is that you can all ship it and be happy together. Ultimately, this video isn't about whether trash should get canceled or not. What I want to do is try and present some of my thoughts about ways that you can really up level yourself and become a better software developer, whether that's as a senior, as a junior, how you respond in these situations, whatever that is. And instead, what you do is you try and control what you have control over. You have the ability to look at a problem, to build the skills and muscles of tackling problems, solving them and getting better and better each day. What an exciting and exhilarating and empowering and wonderful experience it is to be able to grow and get better at something. I love it. It's part of the reason that I love software development and that it makes me so excited. Part of the reason that I'm here trying to get better at making YouTube videos and talking about random stuff. I hope this video might help you. Maybe it'll make you see this meme in a little different way if you saw it before and maybe agreed with some of the other people's responses to it. Maybe it'll just open your mind just a little. If you don't agree with what I'm saying, let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts or your takes on this, or maybe just saying that this format is bad or whatever from Trash's means. I'll definitely never try and disagree on that something Trash did was wrong or could be better. And so even though I do agree with Trash's take, I do agree that the first three interpretations of the meme would be toxic. I just don't happen to think that that's what Trash was trying to communicate to people. Regardless, though, if you ask, do I think trash should be canceled after this meme? I made a little video to give you my answer.